Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am the crochet designer slash business strategist here behind A Crafty Concept. On this channel, I provide free crochet patterns and crochet business tips to help crocheters like you start and grow the crochet business of your dreams. In this video, we are going to be making my newest design, which is the Claire Christmas Stocking Crochet Pattern. This pattern was designed after the viral Claire Bun Beanie that I have made probably over a thousand of in my career. The combination of puff stitch and rib stitches together is such a classy, timeless look, so I thought we absolutely have to put it together as a stocking. If you've ever made my crafty boho stocking, this one is going to be created very similarly. We're going to be starting with the toe portion, just like we do for the crafty boho stocking. So if you're familiar with that pattern and the Claire Bun Beanie pattern, this one will probably be a breeze. Let's hop right into it and see what you need to make your own crochet puff stitch stocking. Okay, this is what you are going to need to make a clear Christmas stocking. You're going to need an H 5.0 millimeter crochet hook and a J 6.0 millimeter crochet hook. These are Clover Amore brand. This is my favorite hook brand to work with. If you've never tried Clover Amore, you absolutely need to give yourself the opportunity because these hooks will change your life. A pair of scissors, a tapestry needle. We won't be using any stitch markers in this pattern. You will also need your yarn. There's lots of different ways you can make a clear Christmas stocking. This one was made with some self-striping yarn. It's a yarn that was sadly discontinued from Michaels. But any self-striping yarn would look really cool in this pattern because we do not turn our work after each row. So I used two colors for this one, the toe, the heel, and the cuff, and then the body was a self-striping. Or you can do a solid color stocking, which I think is super classy and timeless and pretty if this is the route you wanted to go. Or you can do two colors, but not self-striping. So this one is going to have um, an ocean color toe, heel, and cuff, and then the just pink body once I get it finished. But for today's video, I'm going to be using lots of colors because why not? Why not make it as fun as possible, right? So these are the colors I have chosen to use. We have ocean, um, a soft pink. Obviously, I don't know the, the color because it's gone, but it's, I love this yarn. It's easy to find if you're at Hobby Lobby. Jelly bean green, hot rose, and then I chose red. There's two shades of red at Hobby Lobby. I chose the one called red. And these are the colors that I'm choosing because this is the color palette that I'm decorating my craft room for in Christmas. It is inspired by this brand of stuff that I got last Christmas when stuff went on sale. So they, that's where I pulled some of the colors from, at least the best I could. Obviously this isn't the same green, this is more of a forest green, but I like jelly bean green better, so that's the one we're going with. In my mind, I'm going to do a red toe, heel, and cuff, and then I'm going to stripe these colors every four rows of puffs. We will have 32 total rows of puffs from toe to cuff, so that's four rows of each color until we get 32. So that's the colors that I'm gonna be using. You will need about six to seven ounces of yarn depending upon the yarn that you choose. I needed less of this yarn because the cotton weighs less. So I don't really know for sure like yardage wise, but if you were gonna make it a solid color, you would probably, could probably get away with just one skein, but you might wanna have two just to cover your bases. But we're gonna use all of these pretty colors today. So I'm gonna start with my red and my H crochet hook because we're gonna be starting our pattern at the toe. Grab your toe colored yarn and your H crochet hook. We're gonna start by making a magic circle. And go really slow and placing 10 half double crochets inside the magic circle. Chain one to secure. So we're gonna put 10 half double crochets, do a half double, you yarn over or under, whatever floats your fancy. I do it this way, but that's that's a half double crochet. So yarn, insert your hook into the circle, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn, pull through all three. You can yarn over or under, it does not matter. It will not affect the outcome of this pattern. This is just how I taught myself, you do you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more. 
9, and 10, okay? Now we're going to close our magic circle. Going to close it up by pulling our tail. Oh, there we go. Join into the top of our first half double crochet, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This little guy right here. And then we're going to chain one. And we are not going to turn our work. I repeat, we are not turning our work. The chain one does not count as a stitch. Okay, now we're going to increase in each stitch around for a half double crochet increase. That just means putting two half double crochets in the same spot together. So we're going from 10 stitches to 20 stitches. Just like that. This is a second increase, four stitches. Okay, and then just keep doing that all the way around until you have 20 half double crochet stitches. Okay, 20 half double crochet stitches. Now we're going to join into the top of our first half double crochet and chain one. For row three, we are going to increase in the first stitch. So right there where our chain one is, we're going to place two single crochets, I mean half double crochets, two half double crochets, and then we're going to half double crochet by itself in the next stitch. That's going to be our repeat. We're going to increase in the next, then one half double crochet in the next, increase, half double crochet, increase, half double crochet, all the way around. And then we will be going from 20 half double crochets to 30 half double crochets. Okay, my last one is here. Join into the top of our first half double crochet and chain one. This is what we got so far. Now for row four, we're going to increase half, half, increase half, half, all the way around. I'm going to start this row with doing my half double crochets and then an increase just to kind of keep my seam from going clear this way. And I'm going to put my first half double crochet right here, which means I'm going to end squeezing in over here somewhere. So I'm just doing that specifically so my seam doesn't go off to one side, but honestly, it truly doesn't matter. This is just personal preference. So I'm going to go half double crochet, half double crochet, and then an increase. And that means I'm going to end on an increase this time, but this is just personal preference. You can go start with the increases if you want, just like we did on the previous row. And this is going to take us up to 40 stitches. 10, 20, 30, 40. And this is going to be our last increase row. Okay. And then I'm going to end with an increase. And I'm going to squeeze my increase in right there. And that's going to kind of help move my chain a little bit. Straighten it out. My starting seam, sorry. Okay. Now we are finished increasing and we have two more rows of our toe and then we're going to start our puffs but i want to go ahead and measure this little circle just for my numbers loving friends who just enjoy measurements this does not matter because the stocking is not going to fit it doesn't have to fit anything it's just going to hang or dangle or whatever you're going to use it for um so it doesn't have to fit so don't get all caught up if yours are is a little bit different than mine but I just want to let you know where I'm at just for the people who enjoy this type of information. So we are at about three and a quarter. Let's see if we can go under and see if that makes any difference. I'm going to kind of mush it down. Yeah, okay, about three and a half. Three and a half inches is about how wide my circle is. Now that I'm done with my increases. I got this at Cracker Barrel a couple years ago. Isn't that cute? Okay, now we are going to do rows five and six. And we are just going to half double crochet one time in each stitch all the way around for a total of 40 half double crochets. So no more increases. We're going to do two rows of 40. And then it'll be time to start our puffs. Okay, join into the top of our first. But I'm not going to join just yet because I'm going to change colors. If you're not changing colors, you can go ahead and join. But this is what we have for our toe portion. And if you want your toe to be a little bit bigger, you can add one or two more rows of 40 half double crochet stitches around before you start your puffs. But this is what it's gonna look like as is. 
with six rows. So this is what we've got. If you wanted it to be a little bit longer, you could add more rows. So if you want your stocking bigger, do more increase rows. If you want your toe portion more, longer, do more grow rows. And then that will do that for you. Now I'm going to grab my next color. I think I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with ocean here. This is a gorgeous color. And I'm gonna show you how to join with a different color. So back into my working yarn. I'm gonna insert my hook into the top of my first stitch, grab my next color, pull it through all the loops and then chain one. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my red because I won't be using that again until I get to the heel, but we can use it now. So we are gonna be, this is called the foot portion of the stocking and I looked up sections of a sock so I could use correct terms. We did the toe, now we're gonna do the foot, then we'll do the heel, then we'll do the leg, then we'll do the cuff. Those are the terms. So for our first row of the foot, we're gonna do a puff stitch row. So we're going to start by placing a puff stitch in that same spot where we just chained one. That's where our first puff stitch is gonna go. So to do the puff stitch, we're gonna yarn over or under, insert our hook into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, Yarn over or under, insert into the stitch, grab your own pull up a loop. We're gonna do that two more times. That's a total of three. And last one for a total of four. Now we're gonna yarn over or under and pull through all the loops on our hook to complete our puff stitch. You do that. And then we're gonna chain to secure. Now, we are going to skip this chain, skip this guy, and put a puff stitch in this guy. So the chain that we did here replaces this, and then we're gonna puff stitch here. So we had 40 half double crochet stitches in the previous row, which means we are gonna have 20 puff stitches. Three and four, pull through all, and chain. Okay, skip the next one, puff stitch in the next one, and it also helps if you give yourself some slack from your starting yarn so it's not so tight over here. Pull through. There we go. If you have ever made a Claire Bun beanie, you are familiar with the puff stitch technique. We use the puff stitch and the rib stitch combo in the Claire Bun beanie, and that is why this is called the Claire Stocking. Fun tip if for anybody who doesn't know, for anybody that's new here, first of all, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Second of all, my Claire Bun Beanie was named the Claire Bun Beanie because I was currently watching Lost for the hundredth time when I designed it. And I named it after Claire, the character. And then I also have a Kate Bun Beanie, Juliet Bun Beanie, and a Charlie hat. I have all of those all named after different Lost characters. And if you've ever watched Lost, we need to be friends because it's a fun one. I'm going to have my husband and I watch it together after we finish the current show that we're working on. I'm going to continue to puff stitch and chain all the way around. I am already obsessed with the color combo and I'm only on my second color, but it is looking so stinking cute. I will come back as soon as I get my 20th puff stitch and chain situation. Okay, almost done here. That one got a little bit, see, can you see that? How it's a little bit, um, kind of grabbed some of that thread, threading of the yarn. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna pull it out and do it again though, making sure I'm going completely through this stitch here without grabbing any fibers fibers of the yarn. Honestly, it's not important, but it irritates me, so I'm fixing it. There we go. Chain one. Now we should be at the beginning here. I'm just gonna pull everything nice and tight. Yes, so we're gonna join into the top of our first puff stitch right here, and chain or join there and then chain one. Excellent. 
Now we are going to make our next row. Again, another puff stitch row, but this time our first puff stitch is gonna go all the way over here in the first chain space that we created in the previous row. So we're gonna yarn over under, insert into the space, not in the stitch, but into this big giant hole. And that's where we're gonna place our puff stitch. And four, pull through all and then chain. We're gonna repeat that all the way around. This one, this row will be a little bit faster because it's easier to puff stitch in those big chain spaces than it is in the tops of half double crochets. So repeat those all the way around with your puff and then your chain and your puff and your chain until you get back to the beginning. Okay, coming up to the end of the row, I've got one more puff space left and it's really close to the starting chain because our first one was far from the starting chain. So if you can see, we're gonna alternate where our first puff stitch goes in every row. The first one, the first puff, was on the left side of our starting chain. Our starting chain was on the right. And then for this one, the last puff is gonna be close to the chain and it's gonna be on the left side of our puff. So we're gonna join into the top of our first stitch right here so you can see that a little bit more clearly. You see our chain is going right here and our puffs are alternating. We're gonna do that all the way up. So for the next row, which is row nine, we're going to put our first puff stitch right here in this chain space, right up next to our chain one. So right in that space, three and four, pull through all, bada boom, bada bing. We're gonna do that all the way around for a total of 20 puffs and chains. I'm almost ready to let you guys loose to do these rows on your own without the video because I think you got it by now. But I do wanna show you my trick for changing colors while doing the puff stitch because I think it will make things faster for you. And the faster you are, the more you'll be able to crank out and the more you crank out, the more money you're going to make. And that is what I'm here for. If you sell your things, I want you to make lots and lots of money. So I'm gonna tell you all my tricks to help you go a little bit faster. Okay, almost done. Join to the top of our first puff stitch, chain one. For the next row, our first puff stitch is gonna go all the way over here, because we're alternating. And then when we get to the end, I'm going to change to one of my pinks, probably my light pink is what I'm thinking, and I will show you my trick. Okay, almost done. Our last puff is going to be right up next to our starting chain. Okay, perfect. Now, I'm going to join into the top, but I'm going to grab my next yarn color. <laughs> I kept telling you I was going to give you a hack to make it easier, but I can't do that because I'm going to be reusing this yarn. So, sorry. I do have a hack, though. I shared it in the Claire Bun Beanie the striped Claire Bun Beanie video, and I will link that down below for you guys so you can check that out after you watch this one. If it becomes an option later in this video, I'll show you the way I, I normally tie a knot here and here, and then like hide the new tail in the middle of my puff stitch, but I don't think it's gonna be necessary for this pattern, so it's not even gonna be helpful. So, so sorry to get your hopes up. I did not mean to do that. We're gonna grab, for me, I'm gonna grab my next color because we're gonna do four rows of each color because I have four colors. That's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the stitch, grab my next color and chain one. I'm gonna leave my ocean color attached because I'm gonna use it one more time. And I'm just gonna pull it from the inside of the stocking. So to just kind of reach all the way up to the next time that I need to use it. So I'm gonna continue to puff stitch in each chain one space, alternating back and forth until I've got a total of 12 puff stitches on the length of my foot, which will get us up through row 18. So, and I'm gonna change colors every fourth row. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my 12 rows of puff stitches. I've already done four. This is my fifth one, but it's not the fifth row of the actual stocking. This is row 11, and we're gonna continue doing puffs through row 18. 
and then we will make our heel and then we'll do the leg and then we'll do the cuff and then we'll do the hooky and then we'll be finished. Okay, I just finished my last puff stitch in row 18 and now I have 4, 8, 12 rows of puff stitches. I'm going to join into the top but I'm going to switch back to my red because that is what I'm using as my heel. So now we're going to be working on the heel portion of our stocking. Just get situated. Grab the heel color and pull it through. If you're not changing color, you would just chain one and keep going. Now we are going to chain one. This next decision that you make will dictate dictate whether your stocking hangs like this or like this. So if you want your stocking to hang kind of like a J, we're gonna go this way. But if you want it to hang like a backwards J, you need to turn your work and go this way with your heel. But ours are going to hang like a forward J. So we are just going to start right where we are. And we're going to half double crochet 19, starting in the same spot where we just joined our yarn. So to half double crochet, you yarn. We already talked about that at the toe, so we know how to do half double crochets by now. So that's one. And we're gonna go across until we get 19, making sure to go in the actual chain spaces and not just around them like we did with the puff stitches. So this would just be going around them. We're not doing that, we're going in the actual chain spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. A few more. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Perfect. Chain one and turn your work. Now we are on row two of our heel. We're gonna decrease over the first two stitches, half double crochet across, and then decrease over the last two stitches. To do the half double crochet, we're going to yarn over or under, insert our hook into the stitch, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over or under, insert into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. We now have five loops on our hook, yarn over or under, and pull through all five loops. That's our decrease. And then we're just going to half double crochet across until we have two stitches left. And then we're going to decrease again. We're going from 19 stitches in row one down to 17 stitches for row two. Okay, we have two stitches left. So we're going to do another decrease. Just like that. Chain one and turn our work. For row three, we're gonna do the same thing. Gonna decrease over the first two stitches, half double crochet down. Okay, and then decrease over the last two stitches. Chain one and turn our work. Do it again for row four. Half double crochet down. Okay. So we decreased one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One more. And then we decrease again. Chain one and turn our work. And this is going to be our last decrease row, I'm pretty sure. I'll know for sure after I count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, okay, this is our last decrease row. Go ahead and finish the row. Chain one. Okay, turn our work. And now we're going to increase in the first stitch. So that just means two half double crochets in the exact same spot. Then we are going to half double crochet across. Chain one 
And then you guessed it, we're going to increase in the last stitch. And we're going from 11 stitches total to 13 stitches total. And we're going to keep increasing by two until we're back up to 19. Last one is an increase. Chain one. Turn our work. Increase. Half double crochet across. Then we're going to increase here at the end. Chain one, turn our work, and keep doing that until you get to 19 stitches. So do that for two more rows. The next row will be 17 stitches, and then the last row will be 18, 19, and then we will come back and start to shape our heel together. Okay, now we have crocheted all of the portion of our heel. We're going to shape it. So it's very simple. We're just going to take the top half and fold it backwards onto the bottom half, just like this. So not, not forward into the stocking, but backwards. And we're going to put our hook back here, fold it, and then turn it so that you're, you're going this way, unless you crochet left-handed, then it might look a little different, but you should still be going towards the crease of your heel. We're going to single crochet these two edges together. You are working in the raw edge of your rows, so you kind of have to make your own spots for your hook to go, but it doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be hidden inside the stocking. If you're using all the same color, everything's going to blend nicely and you won't be able to see the um, assembly type stitches, so it's, it's going to be fine, I promise. Okay, so single crochet. That's one. Yours might be different. Two. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, but I'm going to give you my counts just in case that's helpful. Three. Looks like it's going to be five. Four and five. Could squeeze in another one right there. Yeah, no need. Okay, so five for me. It's okay if you got a little more or a little less. Now we need to get to this side of our work so we can seam up that side of our heel. And to make it super simple, I just slip stitch across the heel. And I like to just go through one loop here instead of going through the whole entire thing just because it's all going to be hidden on the inside and it's not going to affect the structure of the heel. It's just kind of all hidden on the inside, just slip stitching my way down until I get to the other corner so I can join these together. Let's do one more slip stitch. Okay, now we are going to single crochet these, these two edges together just like we did on the other side, but we're starting at the fold and working our way back towards the foot of the stocking. So hopefully I got five stitches because that's what I had on the other side. Doesn't really matter how many you have, but keeping them the same on each individual stocking would be nice. Again, making up our own spots for our hook to go. Let's see if I can't grab hold of it. One, two, three. Four and five. Okay, now we can slip stitch into our heel. Anywhere you want to go is fine. We're just going to tie off. So I'm just going to go right here. That's where I'm going to slip stitch. And now we can tie off, leaving a tail long enough to, to help you sew it in at the end. Okay, make sure everything's nice and tight and cleaned up. After you do that, you can pop it so the right side is out and the inside is hidden inside your actual stocking. And this is what we've got so far. Looking really nice. Okay, now we're going to start 
the leg portion of our stocking. If I was going to continue with my green yarn, I would just insert my hook under that little space where the green yarn is and then chain one like that so I can continue using it. I am not using my green yarn. I'm going to be using my fuchsia colored yarn. So I'm just gonna make sure these two tails are nice and tight together. Grab my new yarn, insert my hook under where that green yarn is attached, pull up my pink yarn and chain one. Now we are going to puff stitch all the way around. We want 20 puff stitches like we've had previously. We're gonna start with a puff stitch decrease and then we're gonna put another puff stitch decrease over here on this corner and that's gonna give us 20 stitches. If you get all the way around and you realize you have 21 puff stitches, just adjust where you put this first decrease. Obviously, this is my second go. So we're gonna try it again. I'm gonna count ahead of time. So if these were my decreases right here. Then I would skip this one. This would be two, three, four, <coughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then a decrease over this one and this one. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So that is not what we want. We want 20 stitches. So you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna insert my hook right here instead and pull my pink and chain one. Now we're gonna puff stitch decrease over from here to here. So we're kind of closing up this little gap. So to do a puff stitch decrease, you're gonna yarn, insert your hook into the space, grab your arm, pull up a loop, that's one. We're gonna do that two more times, two and a total of three, making sure our new yarn is nice and tight down here out of the way. And then we're gonna do three of those over here on the other side. So yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, that's one, two, and three. Now we're gonna pull through all of the loops on our hook, chain one to secure. Now we're gonna skip this next stitch and put a puff stitch in the next stitch. This time a regular puff stitch, so four loop pull-ups. My yarn is a little splitty. Three and four. Chain, pull through, I mean pull through all and then chain one to secure. Skip this one, go into the next one with a puff stitch. Four. And I'm gonna keep puff stitching across until I get to this corner and then we'll do another puff stitch decrease. Okay, I'm back across my heel and now it's time for another decrease. So I'm gonna go into this stitch and then I'm gonna go down here into this stitch. So one, two, three, and then all the way over here into this stitch. Okay, yarn over, one, two, and three. Pull through all, chain one to secure. That should be number 10. So I'm gonna keep puff stitching. This time I'm in the gaps from this row instead of the single crochets from the heel or the half double crochets, whatever they were. And keep puffing all the way around until we get to the beginning and we should have a total of 20 puff stitches. Okay, I'm at my last one. Chain one, join into the top of my first puff stitch, which was a decrease, and chain one. Now let's count them. When we sew this in, it won't be so messy. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Perfect. Okay, so we just finished row 19 of the body, and now we're gonna keep a going with row 20. Our first puff stitch is gonna go all the way over here in the chain one space created. And then from this row all the way up to the cuff, 
we're just going to keep doing what we were doing down here, alternating where we put our first puff stitch so that our seam is nice and straight. If you put your puff stitch in the same spot every time, your seam will go like this and it will cross over to the front of your stocking. This seam will be on the back so nobody, like against the mantle or however you hang it, so nobody will see it. So I'm going to continue doing my puff stitch rows until it's time to start the cuff all the way through row 38. So this is row 20. I'm going to go all the way through row 38 and then I will come back and we will do our cuff together. Okay, I just finished the leg portion of my stocking and now we're going to get to the cuff. So since I'm finished with my stripes, I can go ahead and cut all this beautiful yarn and cut these first and then we'll give myself a little bit more slack for that last one. And now I'm just going to hide them in there and I will sew them in later. I'm going to grab my cuff color, which for me is back to red. So my toe, my heel, and my cuff will all be red. Insert into the top of the first half double crochet like you're going to join, but instead of grabbing the pink, I'm going to grab my red and chain one. Okay, for row 39, we're just going to single crochet one time in each stitch around, but we're going to switch hooks. We're going to switch to our 6.0 millimeter J hook so our stitches are bigger because if we keep the H, our stocking is going to have a tight little um, cuff, and that's not what we want. We want it to be the same. So we're going up a hook size and I'm going to single crochet going all the way around once on top of the puff and then once inside of the chain spaces. So it should be 40 stitches. And again, I'm going inside the chain spaces, not around them. That's just personal preference. If you want to go around them, you are more than welcome. Honestly, this part won't even be seen because we are creating the part that's going to be behind the cuff. So just single crochet one time in each stitch all the way around. Okay, after I do my 40 single crochets, we're going to join into the top of our first single crochet, chain one, and now we're going to turn our work. I like to turn my work for this part of the cuff so that it's got more structure. I feel like when you go the same way, they don't have as good of structure. I don't know, something about turning just helps it be stronger. This part will not be seen either way. You're welcome to go the same direction if you don't want to turn your work, or you can turn your work like I did, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna have seven total rows of single crochet, chain one, turn your work. So I'm gonna do those off camera, and that will be rows 39 through 45, I think. So seven total rows. Okay, finishing up row 45. Join into the top of my first single crochet and chain one for now. Okay, now we have created the under cuff, if you will. And next we're going to create the over cuff. So if you're looking at one of the finished stockings. So this is the section we're gonna be working on next. So we just did the undercuff, and now we're gonna be working the overcuff. So to make it fold nicely like this, we're gonna be going through the front loop only. I'll show you that in a second. And to get it ribbed like this, we're gonna be crocheting in the back loop only. So I'm gonna show you how to do this part now. Okay, so we chained one. Now we're gonna chain two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're going to chain eleven and that's going to give us ten single crochet stitches for our ribbed brim. This one was made with only nine single crochet stitches so we're going to add one more. If for some reason you want your cuff even longer you can add some more rows here and then add some more chains to this chain right here, and that will make your cuff bigger or smaller if you want a smaller one. Now we are going to work back down the chain 11 that we just made. So skipping the chain closest to our hook, which is this guy, we're gonna single crochet in the next stitch, which is that guy right there. 
That's one, and single crochet all the way down until you get to 10, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, and 10. Okay, now we are going to slip stitch in the space that our chain came out of. So in that same spot, we're gonna slip stitch. Now this, this row belongs to that stitch. Okay, now we are going to slip stitch in the same space where our chain was coming out of, but we're only gonna go under the front loop only. So this is both of our loops where we would normally put our hook. This is the front loop only is right here. That's where we're gonna put our slip stitch and that is gonna help our cuff hang nicely. So we're gonna slip stitch there. Now this row of the cuff belongs to this stitch from the previous row. Now we're gonna slip stitch in the next space, which is this one right here. If you can see that, this one right here, under the front loop only, slip stitch through. And now we're gonna get ready to do the next row, which is gonna go this way, up the cuff chain here. And it slip stitched into the second space, and that space represents this row. So each space is gonna have their own row on the cuff. So now that we have done our two slip stitches, now we are going to turn our work so we can single crochet back down this way. I do not put a chain here. If, you, if you're more comfortable doing that, you can. I'm just gonna go straight into the stitch. So we're gonna single crochet 10 back down this space here, but we're gonna do front loops only but we're gonna do back loops only. So this is the front loop. If you can see it, this is the front loop because it's the closest to us. This is normally when, when we go under both loops, that's normally where we put our stitches. We're just gonna go into the back loop only, which is this one back here, the one furthest from us. And that's where we're gonna place our single crochets. One, all the way down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, now we're going to chain one and turn our work. We're gonna keep doing that all the way around until we have 40 rows of our brim here. I will let you know when we get to the other side if it needs to be more than 40. But if my math is correct, theoretically, it should be 40. So we're gonna single crochet 10, going in the back loop only, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Then we're going to slip stitch two. One in that first stitch closest to the row that we just completed, front loop only. And then again in the next stitch, front loop only. Okay, turn your work. And keep it going. I will see you after we do 40 rows of this ribbed cuff here. Okay, friends, we are almost done. I just finished row 39. So I'm going to slip stitch down here in these last two spaces because this one is for row 39 and then this one is for row 40. Turn our work. Single crochet, back loop only for 10 stitches. Nine, 
10, okay, chain one. Now we are back to row one of our cuff and we need to join row 40 with row one. So I'm gonna turn my work. We are going to go into the back loop of the first stitch, just like we're gonna make another row, but we're also gonna insert our hook into the open space over here from row one, and that's where we're gonna place our single crochet. You could probably also slip stitch if you wanted to. Then we're gonna go back loop of the second stitch into that same stitch in row one, single crochet. We're gonna do that all the way down to close up our join. The third stitch and the third all the way down. Looks like we got two more. And then the last one here. Okay, I'm just going to slip stitch down into the body of my cuff a little bit under one loop. This is just personal preference. I feel like it'd be a little bit cleaner. And then I'm going to cut my yarn and tie off. Now we'll sew that in. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it to the inside of my stocking just so it's not a distraction. And when you bring your cuff down, look at that. And it folds so nicely. That's the back side. Ta da! Isn't it beautiful? Sadly, I can't zoom out any further than that. But I will show you the whole thing here at the end. Okay, the last thing is to make our little hanger so we can hang our stockings on the mantle or the wall or whatever it is that you hang your stockings on. We're gonna start by making, actually I'm gonna leave a decently long tail for sewing in just in case I need it, we might not. I'm gonna start by making a slip knot. Insert our hook and I'm gonna be using my H hook for this. You can use this one if you'd rather. I think I'm just gonna go with the H. Now we're going to chain 27, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Now we're going to single crochet 26 back down our chain. I like to put mine in the back bump. We're going to skip the chain closest to our hook and insert our hook into the next chain. And to find the back bump, we're just going to turn our work so we can see behind our stitches. These little horizontal bumps here, that's the back bump. This is just personal preference. You do not have to go in your back bump if you don't want to. And that's where I'm gonna place my single crochet. That's one. We're gonna do that all the way down for a total of 26 stitches. Okay, almost done. Now I'm going to chain one and turn my work. Now we're just gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down again for 26 stitches. And then we're gonna chain one and turn our work and do one more row of 26. After that, I will come back on camera and we can attach this to our stocking. Okay, almost to the end. There we go. Got, I'm gonna go ahead and chain, because that's what I'm gonna cut off, so I'll just leave it like it is for now. That is our three rows of 26 single crochets, very easy. Now we can go ahead and cut our yarn, and of course my scissors disappeared. Let's switch to these big honking things. Cut our yarn and tie off. Now we can use our tapestry needle to attach this to our stocking. So I'm gonna grab my tapestry needle. This is just easier for me and my stocking. Now you wanna be intentional about where you sew on your hook. So this is how our stocking looks and our hook is gonna go here. Now I don't want it to go through 
the top half of the cuff, just the bottom half, but maybe attach it right there on the fold a little bit through the top half, but just not like the whole thing. Because if you just attach it to this part, your stocking might get droopy. And I'm going to post a picture right now to show you what my droopy stockings look like that I crocheted back in like 2015. Let's try to attach this in a stronger way, shall we? Also, I will say it kind of looks like my cuff is like getting oh, just a little bit. We did go up a hook size, but it still looks like it's kind of, I could probably block it and it would be fine, but it looks like it naturally wants to kind of clench in up here and I want it to be straight. We did go up a hook size. I probably could have done a looser tension or if I absolutely had to, thrown in a couple increases. I was trying to avoid that for ease of understanding. But if you had to, I would do even numbers. So if you have to add an increase, I would do two, four, six, something like that. So your rib stitches turn out okay. I, I could probably just block this and that would fix it. But if yours is having issues because it's even more narrowed in than mine is, maybe you would have to either loosen your tension drastically, go up another hook size, or do a, a few increases in this first row here by an even number. Okay, pretending it's perfect, we're gonna add our little strappy poo. So I'm gonna fold it in half, and I'm going to place it in the stocking aligned with my heel. So my stocking is folded completely in half, front facing, right side facing me, and I'm gonna put my hook right here on the right side. If you turned your stocking before the heel row and it faces this way, yours is gonna to need to go on the left side. But mine faces this way, so it's gonna go on the right side. I'm gonna go ahead and thread on my tapestry needle, just so I'm ready. And then I'm going to place it inside of my stocking. Let's go about you want it to stick out a little bit. So I'm gonna go with the full width of my cuff on the inside. Now, if you don't want your sticking out that far, you can make it smaller than 26 single crochets. I think it could look nice also just sticking out about that far, but this is already what we've done, so I'm gonna go with it. I'm just gonna kind of flip this inside out a little bit so we can see what we're working with. This is the spot it needs to go, right here. I'm gonna lay it down. And I'm gonna line the bottom of my hooky to the bottom of my cuff, my inner cuff. Okay, and then I'm gonna sew it on. I'm gonna go through the cuff and then back up this way, making sure to not pick up my outer cuff, okay? I'm just gonna hold that out of the way. I know it kind of looks messy, but it's gotta be done. And I'm gonna go back up through these two stitches. So the first stitch there, and then the last stitch of the same row is what I'm gonna come back out at. And we'll pull it tight, okay? And I'm gonna do that all the way up. And then when I go across, I'm gonna go through the front and back pieces of the cuff, the inner and outer cuff, just so it's nice and secure at the very top of my stocking. And then I'll go back down this side only on the, the inner cuff. So making sure it's going nice and straight. I'm gonna go into the cuff like so. And then into the second stitch here on my hooky, just like that, and pull it through nice and tight. You could even do this whole thing twice if you want to be extra sure that your little hook is extra secure because there's no telling how much weight this stocking is going to hold at some point. If you really, oh, never mind. Let's see how many more we got. A couple more before we need to go through the outer cuff, okay? 
Now I'm gonna kind of reshape it so we can see what we got. Looking good, looking lovely. Now we are gonna go with everything folded the way it's gonna be. My cuff and everything is folded correctly. Imagined I've already steamed it or blocked it, I mean. Okay, now we're gonna go through all the layers. So I'm gonna go here, going through all the, the inner cuff, the outer cuff, pull it through. Then I'm gonna go back in right here. So no longer doing a whip stitch, we're just doing a regular sewing stitch. I don't even know what it's called, maybe a straight stitch. Making sure this is nice and lined up down here because it's wanting to curl on me, okay? And then push it all the way through, just like that. And then we're gonna go all the way through again. All the layers, inner cuff, outer cuff, all of it, the whole thing. And then back in, make sure it's nice and tight. And then back in again, through the whole thing, coming out through those side stitches there. And now we can whip stitch back down, only going through the, the inner cuff and the two sides of our little hook. Hopefully watching me fumble around on this is helpful for you. You could have just said, attach your hook and call it a day. Use your imagination. Doesn't help that our hook is trying to twist on us. That's probably the most frustrating, trying to keep it straight. Also, the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And also make sure you don't accidentally connect it to the body of your stocking somehow. Just be very careful and intentional and you'll get it. Make sure not to grab anything extra. Then do one more here. Make sure not to grab anything extra. And then we can just attach the very bottom a little bit with um, either a whip stitch if you wanted to, or you can just go in and out. I think I'm gonna stick with the whip stitch because it looks like I have enough room here. So I'm just gonna go under these stitches here and then back up through my hook. And three, should be three, because that's how many rows that I had. Okay, now we're gonna tie off. So I'm just gonna go in, and we can sew this guy in. We didn't need to leave him so long, but it's better to be safe than sorry. And then I go through that circle there to kind of put it in a knot secure a little knot and you can go again if you want to just double secure it you can go all the way around the whole thing again just like we did i'm just going to hide my tail in between my stitches one time should be plenty okay so in the rest of my tails which i absolutely will do 100% and then fix my little cuff here and now she is done let's zoom all the way out so you can get a good look at her ignore my mess <laughs> still not wanting to show you the whole thing I guess we will have to just let pictures do the talking thank you so much for hanging out with me today I hope you love this fun free crochet Christmas stocking pattern. If you post any pics on social media, I would love to see it. Tag me at a crafty concept if you would like to show it to me. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. If you like this video and you want to see more free crochet patterns, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a single one. Until next time, guys, have a great day, a wonderful rest of your week, and I will catch you later.